Hello. Hi, everyone. It's been a while. Uh, I haven't did a book review on the book, the first book I wrote, Matriarch to Patriarch, The Black Woman God. It's now as an ebook. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. I'm working on a, um, a print on demand book. So bear with me with that. I've been working with that for two days trying to get the formatting. Uh, together so uh, it can be printed out for you guys so you can enjoy it that way uh, I did a lot of research on the book uh, I read the but uh, this book the Africans who wrote the Bible uh, this is when um, this this is uh, when I saw in here that everything these these Achaean Jewish people uh, they claim to be these people of God, but yet they didn't have any of the rituals. They had to go to Moses into Egypt uh, to, to to know how to do the rituals and to get close to God and, and and to have these laws and regulations on how to uh, venerate this new this new uh, patriarchal God. So uh, this book is a lot of research from here. Uh, I also read this book. Because I was really trying to find the history of African ancestral women. That was the most important thing to me. Uh, and, and I wanted to find something close. But the more I learned, I learned that we were all over the planet. And how was this possible? How do we were all over the planet like this? And uh, uh, this book is a really good book. He, he brings awareness to this, this fact. Because, uh, uh, what's his name? Sheik Anta Diop, the African origin of civilization. He lets everyone know that these other sub-races, they learn from us. Uh, indigenous, aboriginal, uh, Moors, whatever you want. These are, these are interchangeable terms. Uh, they, they've labeled us as Native Americans, uh, um, pre-Columbian culture. You know, these labels, these new labels really, uh, they stop us. From putting the connections together. But uh, we were all in contact with, with each other. The indigenousness, uh, um, you know, first earliest civilizations, you know, we were all in co contact. We were not barbarians. We knew how to communicate. We were already selling from continent to continent. So uh, this is a really good book. He mentions in here that we had queens, but he never goes into detail about this matriarchal society. Uh, uh, and I saw, I see a, a pattern with that when you, I see, uh, most of our brothers write these books, uh, most of them, uh, are, are looking things from a man's perspective. When reality, uh, behind every good man, there's a woman. If it, if it wasn't for a woman, no man, you know, would be on this planet. So, uh, again, we won't mun, you know, we're goddesses, we're queens, okay? Uh, they didn't talk about the patriarchs in here, uh, but I this when I read the Sibyls, this shed more light about what this story about the Egyptians and the uh, uh, the Egyptians and and the Hebrews was all about. What we think is a war in between two cultures, this is really a gender war. So the Hebrews and get the Egyptians, there was a gender war that was going on. In, on, in our own community. So before, you know, there was a war on race or cultures or anything else, the war was first on the black woman. The power had to be taken from her. Uh, and this is what really that Hebrew-Egyptian thing, them being enslaved and all that stuff, that story is about uh, African Aboriginal women uh, being enslaved and, and the power being taken from them by brothers. Uh, this first, it started, it just started slowly and slowly and slowly until more power uh, was taken from us. The land was uh, the woman. The woman was was responsible for growing plant vegetation. Uh, they created these societies for men. I mean, before men and for our children. And then these men get strong and they, uh, they begin to take this power and knowledge from us and, and create their own sciences and math and all that stuff. Okay, <clears throat> and then this book, uh, Destruction of Black Civilization. Uh, 
this was a really good book. Again, this is these these books are very good account of Patrick Art history. They don't take talk about what happened thousands of years before men were put in power. You know, it's it's a pattern with this. Uh that's the reason why I wrote the book uh Matriarch to Patriarch because we have to look at history from a truthful standpoint to be able to understand what's going on today and how we can fix things, you know, uh, and how we can heal our own self and our ancestors as well. Because, you know, this started, this was a, a, a nasty conflict and a lot of people got hurt when this first started, when these power shifts started. A lot of people died and were damaged during this process. So it's important for us to know what happened then so we can understand what's going on now and, and how we can fix it. But in this book, he talks about uh, how black women were being abducted. And he talks about these chiefless societies, but yet he doesn't really go into detail where the real power was. He said the power was from the people, but the real power were for, from the ancestral mothers who had a deep uh, a connection with the land. Avatar is a beautiful... Um, Beautiful example of, of, of how we ran our societies. Um, so it is a very interesting, these are very interesting book. But what the book that, uh, that really inspired me to write Matriarch to Patriarch is, uh, is Vivian Hunter, Mama Zogby, The Sibyls. Uh, her book was phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't seen my video, I mean, my video on the review of her book, please go back and look at the uh, video, the African uh, prophetess, the Sibyls, uh, oracles, they call them oracles, you'll see them sometimes being uh, called oracles, and, and uh, you'll see a lot of these movies too, that depict those ancient uh, ancestral mothers, what's the movie, The Last Squad, The, the, the Suicide Squad, uh, The Last Witch Hunter, um, uh, you know, it's a few uh, movies that, uh, uh, you know, it's a few movies, I can go on and on with these movies, the, uh, the the last movie, The Mummy. The Mummy is talking about that, these ancient ancestral mothers that wield this kind of power and connection that they had with Mother Earth, because we're truly from Mother Earth. You know, we are the God, this feminine essence, contrary to what you see in your religions, uh, you know. The black woman is God. You see that through Kali. You can see it also in the Orisha with Yamaya. Uh, um, what's that? Ushun, Oya. Uh, you can see it in the uh, in the Egyptian Pantheon as well. You can see Sekhmet, Basset, and uh, uh, Nekbat. Uh, I can go on and on. Newt. I can go on and on because it was it was understood in the ancient world. That and, and, and scientifically, that the black woman, we have uh, uh, civilizations running through our veins. All sorts of, of children we have given birth to on this planet, you know. So uh, <clears throat> that's that's very important. So if we understand a little bit about who we are and where we come from, and about our ancestors. And you don't always have to go to Africa because we are mixed people. And, and, and um, you know, we were we married a lot of different, you know, other cultures as well. Look around and where you at, you know, go discover the ancient cult cultures there because more than likely ancestral mothers populated that region. And, and if you dig uh, uh, long enough, you'll find... Uh, ancient uh, spiritual rituals or, or indigenous of people that did some ph phenomenal things. Uh, look deeply into, uh, if there's some Wicca around, look deeply into that because Wicca was inspired by, by us, by us Ab original oracle, uh, pythoness, uh, they called some of us, we're prophetess. So, uh, Matriarch and Patriarch talks about that. Uh, but the book, uh, uh, Sybil's that blew it out the water because the Sibyls, uh, that woman, you know, that ancestral mother, she really blessed and opened up my mind for me to look right in my backyard for my ancestors. I knew that my grandmother was a, uh, my great grandmother was a Blackfoot Indian. Uh, my my history is just not so well put together, so a lot of things I'm trying, I'm doing, I'm doing intuitively, and I'm being healed along the way 
the more I discover more about myself. And that's what this journey is about. This spiritual journey is to learn, learning more about you, how to connect with those energies within you, how to work on yourself and, and, and build that good character and have these special relationships uh, with your ancestors and these other high beings and the universe to guide you on your path and purpose. So uh, it's just been beautiful. But when I went down to the Toltec Mountains, I have already been drawn down there to discuss Arkansas because my great-grandmother's from there. But as I began to do more research and I read uh, the book The Sibyls and just going over things and remember things in my mind uh, that my mother told me when I was younger, uh, what my grandmother told me when I was younger, and putting all the connections together, uh, my uh, my family were, were, were practicing some of these indigenous practices as well. But they wasn't really talked about because they were shown up on in that time. So they had to be careful about how they discussed these things. Uh, <clears throat> but down here in the Toltec Mounds, they talk about the Plum Bayo people. And they're really a matter of fact that these people were not Native Americans. <clears throat> Not in these aspects, and don't get caught up in these labels as in Mexicans, uh, you know, Moors, or, you know, all these other names they have for dark-skinned individuals. We are Aboriginal people, period. We are the people of the land, Jamaican, whatever you want to call yourself as a dark-skinned person. That's who you are. You are Aboriginal, indigenous person. You are from Mother Earth. And the only way to fix things is to go back and, and, and find out who we were, we are and to live in that truth. Uh, that's the only way to heal that. And uh, Matriarch the Patriarch uh, is about that. It's a really short read. It's only 100 pages. Uh, it's a lot of, it's packed with a lot of factual information. Thanks to uh, Miss Vivian Hunter, Mama Zogby, she wrote the, uh, uh, the African Prophetess, the Sibyls, the Oracles, Mama Wati. She wrote that, and, and she did a lot of footwork. She saved me a lot of footwork in understanding who I am and giving me the clues on where to look at, where I can connect with the land, with Mother Earth. Because there's places, there's grids, and these places are so important because they're energy grids. That our ancestor created. They created that we need to connect back with. We need to get that energy because that energy is connected with us. So we have to align and connect with that energy. Whether you're going out there to meditate or to venerate or to acknowledge or pour libations. We have to connect back with that land because that's who we are. And those uh, DNA codes need to be activated. You know, that's a part of our, our spiritual uh, evolution as well. We have to connect back with the land because a lot of the power, what we have, the grounding that we have is with Mother Earth and we're going to need that on our spiritual journey. We need that connection and that support from our ancestors. So no matter where you are, uh, like in the Americas, I wrote a chapter about the um, connecting with the ancestors in the Americas, in Asia, in India, in uh, uh, Europe. I think I wrote a little bit about Europe. But we were the first, um, we were the first uh, uh, mothers there as well in Europe. So there is, if you can, there's an indigenous culture on every continent. So if you can connect to those sacred sites and get to those sacred sites and start doing your libations, you know, uh, this is about your spiritual journey. You don't have to be initiated in any in the religion. These religions were made out of our spiritual practices. This is already in you. This is how you already a divine being. So uh, you need to connect with those, connect with those sacred sites that you have in, 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 in the, on the continent that you're on. And I thought I had to go to Africa, and here it is right at my back door. It's right at my back door. I, I was connecting with them unconsciously, and um, I was really wondering about that. Uh, when I was going through that, was there anyone else that were... Uh, uh, you know, other women like me, they were unconsciously being drawn to the, the, the ancestors and being drawn, uh, just following this tuition, this intuition. Uh, and this book, Ayami Orosongo, Divine Femininity, 
she really described my experience, what I was going through. I've always had a, a connection with birds and talked to birds. I always felt like they were my ancestors. And she confirms that the birds are um, uh, 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 is the way our ancestral mothers talk to us. They, they, they guide us and watch over us through the birds. And I've always had this connection with birds and turtles. So uh, this is a really good book. She really confirmed what I had went, went through when, as I was writing the book. As I was writing the book, I felt like the ancestors was talking to me the whole time I was writing the book, just telling me the stories of the ancestral mothers. And so uh, I said, you know what, I'll, uh, you know, we, everybody needs to know about this. Uh, everybody needs to know our story. Uh, Vivian Hunter, she does a very good, um, uh, you know, way of telling the stories. But she went back over, I think she went back to Africa and she learned the old ways. Uh, and, and that costs a lot of money. It really does. And, and, and that worked for her. Uh, if you on that path and, you know, it's inspirational to that as well. Uh, her book, uh, she gives a, a worldview of us. You know, she represents us on a real worldview. I think she did, her book is maybe three or 400 pages. She wrote two books. Um, I'm watching both of them are good. Cause I, I, I purchased both of them. Um, <clears throat> And so she did all the footwork on that, and that was beautiful. Um, it was four and five and, and, and four hundred five five hundred pages, and that book really inspired me to go back and look at these other books I I read, and put a total story together because she talks about the story and going back looking at these patriarch stories, I was create uh, I was able to create a better picture so. So we can understand what actually happened to us and what is playing out right now, uh, and how how it is it is so important for us to know this knowledge, start living in it, and start gravitating away from these religions and gravitating more towards nature, uh, and, and trusting what we have on the inside of us. So, uh, like I said, get the book, Matriarch to Patriarch. Um, you will not be disappointed. I used a lot of good resources, a lot of factual information, even uh, architects who, who uh, you know, they they have documented these facts that uh, for thousands of years before patriarchs were put in 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 power that women uh, we were head of household. And historians, some historians have refused to document this information. They just uh, uh, want you to think that women were just submissive and, and, and you know, during in the entire history, women were just submissive. And that's just not the case. For thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years before patriarchs were put into power, matriarchs owned the land, owned the planet, basically, because we were, we were cultivating the food. You know, we were sustaining societies. Uh, with our knowledge, our spiritual knowledge, and birthing children into this world. Um, we were in charge, and then patri patriotism uh, took over. Uh, and and the power shift happened. A lot of things happened uh, within this power shift. But like I said, get the book. You know, you're going to enjoy it. And uh, I've put a, a lot of information in there. It's only 100 pages. So uh, you can get the ebook on Amazon for five bucks. Uh, you can. I'm also working on the print thing, trying to get it print on demand, but I'm having some formatting issues. So please bear with me. I worked on it yesterday, and I'm working on it today. And I just decided to do a video uh, on the book. I was like, okay, well, I just have to work on the formatting I I uh, issue and just talk about the book. Go ahead and do the book review, and. Um, I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it because I, I wrote it for our children so they'll know our, 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 our future daughters, our future mothers. So they'll know, they'll know exactly who they are and what they need to do uh, to heal themselves, you know, and to be proud of who they are. Uh, we have a very rich legacy. We have something to be proud of. And the way to correct it is to uh, work on our good character and that way we can raise better children, okay? So this is all about correcting uh, what has been done to us 
and uh, healing generations by correcting and teaching our children. So uh, get the book. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching and supporting the video, loved ones. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, if you're interested in any of these books, I about got this from Amazon. Uh, the African, uh, the African Origin of Civilization. I think I got this from Amazon as well by Sheik Diop. Uh, the Destruction of Black Civilization. I don't know where I got this book. I've been had this book so long. I could have got it from the bookstore, but yeah, this is a good good book. And the Africans who wrote the Bible. This one I think I got from Lulu. I don't know. The a uh, Amazon probably. The Africans who wrote the Bible by uh. Nana uh, Banshee Darkwa. I did a book review on that, so it's un more information on this guy, uh, this guy, girl, I'm not sure, in the book, in the book review. So thank you for watching. Light and love. Uh, light and love. May the ancestors be with you. May the angels be with you. May the ancestral mothers be with you. Have a beautiful day, goddesses and gods.